Kit Guru is starting CES 2023 with NVIDIA. While we were traveling, that's myself and Luke, to CES, NVIDIA announced RTX 4070 Ti, which as we know was previously known as something else but was then unlaunched. We have over here a demo of RTX 4070 Ti running alongside RTX 3090 Ti. They took us through this at great length and to the left of the demo, Luke will move in a second, they've got lots of numbers. But part of the essence of this demo is not just 3090 Ti versus 4070 Ti, it is DLSS 2 versus DLSS 3, two very different technologies. You will do yourself a huge favour if you refer to Dominic's reviews of RTX 4070 Ti and then check back to 3090 Ti and you will see 4070 Ti scores 8 out of 10 and is worth buying. You can also see in this build that the RTX 4070 Ti they're using is a chunky graphics card. This 70, 80, 90 class of graphics card these days, frankly, they're all huge and they all consume quite a lot of power and of course cost. But performance is undeniably impressive. And here we have a line of 4070 Ti graphics cards, PNY, Inno 3D, Galax GeForce MSI, Gigabyte, that's 4070 Ti Eagle overclock 12 gigabyte, Gainwood, haven't seen a Gainwood in a very long time, Azus Tough Gaming, Palette and Zotac. I don't think we missed any there. That is a full gamut of graphics cards from all the leading players. And we're finishing up with something neither Luke nor myself has seen before, which is a colourful graphics card. Obviously it's an RTX 4070 Ti, because that's the flavour of today. However, Colourful seems to be a Chinese-only brand, so while we get press releases quite regularly for Colourful products, have never actually seen one before. I must confess, while the word Colourful does not describe it in the slightest, it's certainly impressive to look at. And then we move on to something I did not expect to see at this CES, which is 40 series graphics in laptops. Obviously we knew this was coming, however we fully expected that during CES we'd be talking about next-gen graphics and then the graphics themselves will launch, say, in February. However, here we are. So NVIDIA's given us full specs on the graphics, but as ever, power plays a huge part. What we're looking at here is a 4080 that has been capped to 50 watts, points, versus a 3080 Ti running at approximately 150 watts. And the point they're making here is the 4080, with much less power, is running at slightly higher frame rates. In other words, NVIDIA is talking about efficiency. Also, I'll move my mic nearby. And yes, the cooling is howling away. As ever, laptops that are really working flat out make a load of noise. Now this is something we don't know quite what to make of if that's a sentence, a Zeus ROG Zephyrus G14 with RTX 4090 laptop graphics. We fully expected to see a Zephyrus G14 at CES and we would not have been shocked had it been AMD on AMD. However, here we're guessing it's an AMD CPU because what we've been told is talk to a Zeus and we know for an absolute fact it's NVIDIA graphics. The power limit on this GPU is in the order of 90 watts. Uh, after a lengthy conversation between one of the NVIDIA reps and Luke, we've established that NVIDIA talks about power for the GPU in a different way to AMD. So 90 watts would be comparable probably to AMD talking about 80 watts for their GPUs. As ever, it's going to come down to the review and benchmarking. But this laptop looks absolutely fascinating as an entirely unexpected thing at CES. We speculate it's going to cost around about three grand. Moving into NVIDIA's second room, this is where they've been talking about software. So GeForce RTX Studio and here we have the Omniverse. So they've been importing for example this model into this scene here and they can change it around, do all sorts of clever stuff and so on. Truly impressive if I'm entirely honest, however I am no sort of artist. But what really did grab my attention apart from this awful scene here which is to do with this webcam and us looking utterly ridiculous if we go to the left we have the Zeus Zenbook Pro 14 OLED running RTX 4070 graphics very high class graphics in a slender laptop and as a result they can do huge amounts of work on it now again Nvidia is talking about the software that they're using 
But both Luke and myself were blown away by the form factor of that chassis and the screen. The OLED screen looks absolutely amazing. Also, if we go to the right, Luke, here we have Razor Blade 18. We'll be seeing Razor in a couple of days' time. The 18-inch form factor chassis is new for CES. I think I've heard tell of one other manufacturer using 18, but for Razor, that's a new one. So we're going to be seeing more of this soon. NVIDIA RTX Remix built on Omniverse, remastering classics with RTX, as the card says, specifically at the moment DX8 and DX9 games. This is one for the modders, obviously. You take an old and janky game and you make it look new and wonderful. One obvious point is that this only makes any sense if the game itself is any good in the first place. So, for example, if you love Portal to Bits, absolutely brilliant. Uh, we hope to see a longer list of games from NVIDIA in the very near future. Right now, to say it's select is an understatement. We're talking but a tiny handful. Moving past NVIDIA Canvas, we've got some live streaming with AV1, 4K60 at 10 megabits per second. This is clearly going to be replacing H.264 as hardware gets updated. However, you require compatible hardware to make it work truly properly. So that's going to be realistically three years before it becomes mainstream. Right now it's looking very promising. The frame rates are absolutely epic. Actually, the question about AV1 encode and decode is far more vexed than simply saying hardware from the past three years can do blah, 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 because that's simply not true. AV1, we think, comparing notes, first came to our attention with Intel's Tiger Lake. Uh, however, the question of whether you can encode or decode or both it is it's entirely down to the hardware, but also down to the app support. Uh, so, as has been pointed out, if you're streaming and your TV suddenly says, actually, you can have this feature or that feature, it's, it's a multi-way matrix. Um, we are going to have to go back to base and do some serious thinking about this one. But I'm sticking to my point, which is that AV1 encode is coming. Uh, the hardware is certainly in existence, but we're not going to see it mainstream, in my opinion, for another few years yet. But having seen 4K60 streaming over a perfectly reasonable bitrate, essentially we're lowering the requirement from 25 megabits per second to 8 megabits per second. And that is well worth having. And as we say goodbye to NVIDIA at CES 2023, we're closing with a shot once again of the new ASUS ROG Zephyrus G14, which we suspect is running on the latest AMD hardware, which will probably be announced by Dr. Lisa Sur of AMD tonight at her keynote. So all that speculation, by the time you see this video, you'll know whether we're right or horribly wrong. Right, on to the next part of CES 2023.